Good morning. Welcome back to the Retire Report. I'm Hank Parrott, your host. We've been actually it's going to get into a lot of things, and it seems to all be about investing today, which is okay. We've been on a break for a couple of weeks, so we're back live with you today. So if you'd like to give us a call, feel free. There's a the number on the screen, 615-737-7587. And we're going to go right to, this is uh, Linda. Linda, welcome to the Retirement Report. Hello. Good morning. How are you today? I'm doing fine, thank you. Excellent. How can I help? I'm 76, mm -hmm. and I have uh, my money invested um, about $800,000 now in half uh, Vanguard uh, total stock index funds and half in the total bond fund. Okay. And I recently sold uh, about $100,000 of it, and it's just been in the bank in a savings account. Mm-hmm. And I've seen some of these online banks that pay a lot more interest, like a dollar point oh five. Right. And I wondered about the safety of them. I would like to move my money into that if it's safe, but I don't know if it is or not. There, online. What you want to look at when you're looking at online banks is make sure that they're still FDIC insured. If that's you know for that safety concern sure. that you have. Second is make sure the type of uh, you know some of the annuity or excuse me not annuities the uh, CDs. Make sure that they are just your. That sounds like your straightforward garden variety. You know one percent for I don't know is that for one year or longer. Well, this is this is just the interest. What I'm talking about is just the interest rate for the right. But there's on that CD. There's an interest. Are you talking about interest rate on a CD? Correct. No interest rate on the money. Right. But are you putting it in a CD with that online bank? No. No. Is it going to be just in the, like a savings account? Yes. Ah, okay. So they're doing a special kind of entry. Come in, and we'll pay you one percent on your uh, savings account. And they'll usually have take a look because a lot of times they'll have uh, conditions that you have to do certain things. You might need to get a debit card. You may need to make certain transactions. Uh, you may need anyway. Just look and make sure you read the small print about what if any other requirements are there. Uh, to get that one percent, okay, on your savings, and yes, otherwise, as long as it's FDIC insured, and you, again, you make sure that there's no conditions that you're not going to want to comply with, uh, then that should, yes, the FDIC insurance is, of course, the big thing that would keep it similar to a brick and mortar type bank. And there are other things you can use. Fixed annuities right now, as an example, CDs and fixed annuities. When you're shopping them, fixed annuity right now, though, are three-year term, are paying about two percent. Um, and it depends on how long then you're wanting and what kind of return you're looking to get and the safety and what ultimately is this a uh, money you're going to need over the next uh, say three to five years? I might. My only income mm -hmm. uh, other than my investments is Social Security. Okay. Well and that's the other part, making sure that you've got, there are some great, way, great strategies for uh, getting additional income uh, from your investments. Now the Vanguard Total Bond and the Vanguard Total Stock uh, those those two together are not a bad blend. There's some other parts, though, some other great Vanguard uh, mutual funds and ETFs uh, that can give you even um, uh, more benefit um, in terms of breaking out those. So, for instance, on the total stock and the total bond, you've also, well, total stock we'll stick with first. On that one, unfortunately, you've got a lot of mid caps and stuff in there, and that could skew your benefit, you know, what you're getting. And for total stock, are you sticking strictly U.S., or are you looking for international as well? I had some international, mm -hmm. and uh, I lost money on it from the time I bought it, you know. Yep. It went down and down and down, so I finally sold it. Yeah, over, if you go back over the last year, maybe, I think about year, year and a half, almost two years now, the international and emerging markets have done extremely well, double digit, even up in a 20% plus range. But prior to that, if you look back, say, three to 10 years, they were abysmal, they were horrible. In fact, if you look at the 10-year returns, even with the last two years, put in there as, as great as they've been, you still see returns that are only about 1% to 2% over the la average over the last 10 years. So they did do pretty poorly in that period, and you'd want to limit it. The next piece is uh, if you can, you can break out with Vanguard, they've got, um, there, are, there are other ways you can use asset allocation. I talk about it in my book. It's called a three-factor model. Dr. Eugene Fama developed this. He won a Nobel Prize for it, in fact, in 2013. I've been using that model of his now for about 12-plus years. Um, 
it, you know, this is what is shown that he's done so much. We've got basically 60 years of Nobel Prize winning academic research going back even before Dr. Fama to Dr. Markowitz, uh, the, the father of modern portfolio theory. We know how to put together a portfolio. And even with Vanguard, I like Vanguard funds. I use them in my portfolios as well. Vanguard ETS, um, even more so because they're, they're lower fees. But I, I, I choose different ones and the formula I use is based on Dr. Fama's research. So DFA funds are another one that are real good institutional index funds. I mention these for this reason, Linda. There's a way that you can get better returns potentially out of your portfolio and reduce your risk over just those two funds. And that could help you when you're talking about getting additional income and yet keeping your, you know, keeping it stable. In other words, your volatility very, very low. Um, that's a way to do it. And maybe even laddering, having a conservative portfolio piece that you use to bring that income. Conservative portfolio that I was, you know, utilizing Vanguard as an example over the last, uh, let's see, over the last 10 years averaged between three to 5%. It's over the last 10 years, it's about 10. If you look shorter term, it's in that three to five, you know, three, four, five range. So there's a way that you can get additional return. Uh, it's not going to be, you know, a fixed return like you're talking about uh, with the CD, but it'll give you a potential bigger return than what the CDs alone would do. Okay, thank right. you very much. You're very welcome. You have a good day. Thanks. Bye. Bye. You know, this is one of the things when it comes to investing, and it's each individual is different. And that's why I make the offer that I do each week, because we want to give you an opportunity to see your specific situation, what the best way. I'm talking in generalities, and you hear me qualifying things because I know I'm talking to a broad audience, and I don't want to, I want to make sure that I'm able to help you, but not give bad advice to somebody that would apply the same thing in their situation or wouldn't necessarily be appropriate. So um, in this one, just like with Linda, she's looking for something safe that can give her a bigger return, and in this low interest rate environment, Environment, it's really difficult you're you know in fact here's what I'll do when we come back I'm going to explain a little bit about this environment what we have today and some ways that you can get bigger returns safely okay and what the trade-offs uh, can be what the pros and cons of each uh, strategy might be but first we'll take a quick break join us here we'll be right back on the retirement report <music> 